been an exciting time for lithium investors over the last two years with rising prices, increasing demand for electric vehicles, and governments and industry alike attempting to shore up their access to this critical metal. We have Kobe Kushner, mining analyst from Red Cloud Securities with us here today to shed some insight and shed some color on, this, on these particular issues. Hey, Kobe, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me here, Dwayne. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. You know, we're definitely um, pleased to have you with us today. Thanks for joining us. I mean, uh, so, Kobe, just on the macro here, we see a lot of M&A happening with a lot of uh, companies coming together here to shore up their access with lithium. So can you give us some, some shed some color on that as well? I guess the elephant in the room, Dwayne, is the uh, the deal that Lithium America has just announced where they're acquiring a, a peer arena minerals. Uh, so, you know, that's a pretty hefty deal. It's about a quarter of a billion dollars worth. And uh, I think that deal was really about uh, securing Lithium America's uh, foothold in the Pastos Grandes Solar in Argentina. So that's kind of one of their growth pipeline assets. They already have a resource there, and now they're kind of bolstering their, their foothold there. Um, you know, aside from that, uh, there was a smaller deal, but I think it was if arguably... Uh, more important, in, in my opinion. Uh, and that was a $70 million deal by Arizona Lithium to acquire a private uh, Canadian brine developer um, called Prairie Lithium. So that was really, um, it, you know, Arizona Lithium, they're getting out of Arizona, they're getting out of the clays, and they're going over into Saskatchewan to look at these brines that, and, and the DLE technology required to tap into them. Right, right. And, you know, speaking of that as well, we see a lot of uh, global uh, entities here trying to shore up their supplies of the, the of, uh, of lithium also. So we see issues happening with Zimbabwe. There were some issues with Indonesia and the WTO earlier this year. So I'd like to get your take on that as well. Yeah, look, uh, the Zimbabwe news is, is making its rounds. Um, and honestly, it's not surprising to hear this, and I think we're going to be hearing more of it, of companies that are, or countries that are uh, looking to crack down on securing their domestic supply chain of lithium. Lithium is a critical metal, and, and it's been deemed a critical metal in uh, so many countries, including Canada and the U.S., um, and they're not the first country to, to pull something like this. You look at earlier this year, we had Mexico announce that they're nationalizing lithium, and they only have one really... Uh, Really, there's only line of sight for one that might get into production in the coming years, and that's the Bacanora uh, lithium clay mine. Um, and then even Canada, you know, a, 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 where we are right now, politically stable jurisdiction. You're in Canada, right, Dwayne? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, where we are right now, um, politically stable jurisdiction. They forced divestment, of, uh, Chinese divestment, from three junior lithium companies. Right, right, exactly. So even Canada is getting the message that, you know, mm -hmm. hey, these are very important metals moving into the future. So we need to secure our supply of it. And I wanted to talk to you about prices as well. This is always the burning question with investors. We've seen prices rally about 700% over the last two years. So where do you see prices moving in the near term as well as the long term? Um, look, near term, I'll, say, I'll give you my take on the near term, medium term, and the long term, okay? All right, perfect, perfect. So, so near term, you know, a lot of, there's some negative sentiment going around in the past couple of weeks. Uh, we saw Pilbara auction prices uh, fall down a little bit. And I'm talking, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's sub 5%, uh, their latest auction prices. Uh, that being said, chemical prices are still hot. They've cooled slightly, but we've seen bigger drops over the last year, and we didn't get this amount of concern in the market. Um, right, right. And, uh, you know, I, I, other people are, lots of analysts are, are calling for a uh, surplus of lithium in 2023, as opposed to the deficit that we saw. Now, something that um, analysts often do, and I think it's it's somewhat misleading, is they group all lithium chemicals together as one, and they put everything into lithium carbonate equivalent as a way of measuring supply and demand. They don't break down how much of that is what product. They don't break down what is battery grade and what is technical grade. Um, 
Meanwhile, there's other analysts that are forecasting, sure, maybe on a total LCE basis, we're going to see a slight surplus. And the surplus, by the way, isn't going to be big. You know, we're talking somewhere around 2,000 uh, tons of, of surplus on an LCE basis. But they're still calling for a deficit for just battery grade material. You know, the, the fact of the matter is the, the current prices right now, um, the price environment right now, it's, it's become very disconnected from the cost curve. And it's been making people almost want prices to, to quickly come down and, and crash. But until we're going to see, until we see new supplies come online, which we we've really haven't seen much, um, you know, I, I think prices are going to stay high for the, the medium term for at least the next 10 years. Um, we'll see some volatility in the short term, especially next year. Um, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if prices came cooled uh, a little bit. Um, but I'm not expecting them to crash back to historic norms. And I'm not expecting them to go back to the upper end of the cost curve. Um, long term, eventually, yeah, we'll come back down to uh, the cost curve as all commodities, I shouldn't say all, but lots of commodities, their prices end up being 80%, 20% above the highest end of the cost curve. So I think, uh, I think this is a long bull run for lithium. Right, right. And, you know, there are some differing opinions out there. We see, you know, Goldman Sachs and a number of... Uh, of I don't economics. even know why Goldman Sachs bothers to, to forecast these things. They are guilty. They are, um, they are the, the epitome of putting out misleading reports. You know, the, the example that I'm talking about when I'm saying analysts who like to group everything together, um, they, analysts that are, are double counting where the supply numbers are coming from, I think, uh, you know, we, we purposely don't do this at Red Cloud. You know, we, we don't bother having our own supply demand forecast because we leave it to the experts. Uh, team, there's teams like uh, Benchmark Mineral Intelligence, for example, that have been tracking this and they do a much better job of it than any broker, in my opinion. Where can we reach you? Like, where can we get back to if we want to get some more of these insights? Because I see that, you know, you've done a lot of work here within lithium and some other um, uh, industries as well. Yeah, so we cover much more than the lithium space, of course. Um, but we're, we only do mining and we only do exploration. We only deal with metals and, and materials. So uh, if you want to find our research, you could go to redcloudresearch.com. We don't charge anyone for it. Uh, you could, it's free to make an account, register, uh, definitely subscribe to our Rocks daily emails and our actionable insights emails. Uh, we send our research out almost every day.